a tremendously powerful crossroads in the human story. We're in a time in which there's enough consciousness being conscious. There's consciousness, but there's not always consciousness that is conscious of itself. And when we become conscious of ourselves, we empower ourselves to make choices. And we know through this new quantum spirituality that there is an infinite amount of choices to be made. And the choices are going to set the course of the direction in which we're going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And we are a part of that. The old paradigm was we kind of were sitting on the side line watching the game and just hoping that those who were players would uh, make the right choices for us. But that's over now. We're seeing a complete shifting of what leadership means today. And it's not about control, but it's about facilitating. It's about channeling. It's about assisting those who are willing and ready and have chosen. I believe before you came into this incarnation to have a contract that you would be showing up at this time. So nobody is an accident that is sitting in this audience today. I don't even care if you're illegitimate. You know, God doesn't see illegitimate and it doesn't see immigrants <laughs> either. We're all his children, no matter who we are. And that is the way spirituality is going versus the way religion is going. Religion is still under reductionism. It is still putting things in its box, in its place. But spirituality is erasing those boundaries that have been drawn for thousands of years as we become a people of wholeness and unity and being brought together uh, in a way in which we have never seen this opportunity being afforded to us today. So my message is about a new heaven and a new human. I believe that the human story of evolution is quite compatible with the story of creation. I have never been a person who's done well to choose this or that. I don't live in the black and the white world of this and that, but I've always kind of seen something from the gap, I call it. That place between this and that. I've kind of walked in the gray areas of life. And to us who have, for so long we didn't have a place. You know, if you don't have a label, you don't have a box, you don't have an identity based on culture and world, you don't have a place. You're just kind of a vagabond wandering around out here in this wonderful sphere of new possibility. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be those with you and with others who are joining together to realize that we have become co-creators of destiny for humanity. And the choices that we are making are intensified with great intention and energy and creativity as never before. So be careful what you think. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you send your intention for. You may get it. And it may not be necessarily in alignment with your divine soul purpose for being here. And that's the key, is that we stay alert and conscious enough to be able to invest our energies into things that are in alignment with divine purpose uh, in our lives. So things don't look so good today when we look at things through our cynical eyes. <laughs> you know, when you look through uh, your cynical eyes, you see a cynical world. But if you look through sacred eyes, you see a sacred world. And I'm inviting you today to have your eye of enlightenment opened. And there's people that do that. I'm one of them. I'd be glad to work with you to open your eye of enlightenment through tuning forks and vibration and sound. There's many ways to do it, but make sure you're seeing through the eye of enlightenment with its innate ability to see through appearance, illusion, and the hidden agenda of people, places, and things. That's through the eye of enlightenment. When the eye of enlightenment is activated, the body is full of light, it says. 
So I don't see things in the uh, perception of breakdown. I see it in the vision of breakthrough. I realize that every system that I've known growing up is in jeopardy today. It is in the state of breakdown. It is becoming unstable. Whether it's the educational system that we all know could really use some reworking. And you know planted in that system is a bunch of young people that have different DNA. They have different DNA. Some people call them indigo children. They're called many different things. But actually they are children that have different DNA. I want to share something with you called the children of the dream. About 10 or 11 years ago in the U.S. there was a baby born with AIDS and they tested this baby. And six months he tested positive for AIDS. And then they tested him a year later and he tested no longer positive. They wanted to know what was going on with this child, so they sent him to UCLA to see what was going on, and tests showed that he didn't have normal human DNA. In the human DNA, we have four nucleic acids com combined into three p patterns. These are called codons. Don't worry about that, what that means, but you understand your DNA has uh, four letters to it, just like the English. Everything on here is one of 26 letters <laughs> sequenced into words. Your DNA has four of those letters instead of 26 that sequence themselves into information that you become. You become the word of DNA made flesh. Uh, so there are 64 ways to combine that. That's all that means. Out of the 64 different patterns, human beings, homo sapiens, that means who we sort of are. <laughs> I don't know if we completely are, but it's been the adolescent human evolution of 12,000 years of dominion over the earth, men over women, reductionism, and all of this that's been going on for 12,000 years as we evolve to a place to develop identity or ego. You can all remember what it was like to be a teenager. We got couple here. It's not the easiest thing. All you hear is you're too old or you're too young. You want to do something? You're too young for that. And then they tell you, well, you're too young not to do that. <laughs> so it's that in-between stage where you're trying to develop who you are. You're feeling your body. You're feeling all of these kind of things. This is what we've been going through. And now it's graduation time again. Just as we move from being a more uh, uh, child evolution of nature and feminine and goddess to all male God, all male this, 12,000 years of religion. We now stand on the threshold of a new leap in evolution, and that is to a place in which the male and female come together and all races come together, and race graduates to grace. And we become a people of grace rather than just race. Uh, and you are here at this time. So, we only have 20 of these codons out of 64 turned on as homo sapiens. So don't let religion fool you that God created your, your body because it didn't. Your body is the result of evolution. Your spirit is the result of creation. And creation incarnated into evolution. Wow, think about it. 2,000 years ago, creation incarnated into the human experience, and there was a, an awakening that happened. And that is what we call the Christ in the Son of God. The whole Jesus story. The whole Jesus story. If you take it out of religion and realize that it's a point in consciousness in which the divine awoke in the human experience and they became one. And at that point, it wasn't millions of years of evolution that drove us. It was spirit that began to drive evolution. It was consciousness. And today we're growing faster because we're making different choices. And these choices are collapsing time. It's called 
wrinkle in time. Remember over his movie? <laughs> wrinkle in time. I do it this way. Sometimes people, uh, we have an, a little older crowd here. We have a more mature crowd here. And so <laughs> let's put it that way. So uh, here we are. And you're kind of here. And you're going, okay, well, I'm in my 60s, my 70s. Wow. It's a long way to get to enlightenment over here. But what if I do this? It's not so far, is it? That's a wrinkle in time. And that's what quantum is teaching us, is how that we can collapse time. Of course, the miracles also teaches the collapsing of time frames itself. So anyway, we have 20 of these uh, that are on that makes us who we are as human beings today. So then they tested the kid to see how strong his immune system was, and they took a very lethal dose of AIDS and put it in a petri dish and mixed it with some cells, and his cells remained completely unaffected. They kept raising the lethalness and the composition and finally ended up to 3,000 times more than was necessary to infect a human being with his cells, and yet his cells stayed disease-free. When they started testing with uh, his blood with other things like cancer and discovered that the kid was immune to everything, then they found another kid with these codons turned on, and then another, and then 10,000, and then 100,000, and then a million of of them and at this point UCLA by watching worldwide DNA testing get this estimates 1% of the world has new DNA that breaks down to approximately 60 million people who are not human by the old criteria they're here they're here they are among us so this talk comes from a Bible prophecy that seems to be applicable to this whole story of how we shall enter into a new heaven and a new earth. We un need to understand that heaven is not a location but refers to an inner realm of consciousness. That this esoteric meaning of the word and this also meaning is the teachings of Yeshua Jesus who taught us the kingdom of God is within. Do not look for heaven, he said, by observation. Do not say that it is here and it is there. Do not go into the desert when they say it is there, but stand still and see the salvation of God. And know in this moment that heaven dwells within you. A new heaven is the emergence of a transformed state of human consciousness. And a new earth is the reflection in the physical realm. So what we're learning today in this age of, of energy work that is growing and growing and growing all over the world today is that we're finding out that you've got to work in the unseen part of us before it manifests into the seen part of us. Energy before matter. This is called a blueprint. Every one of you have an energetic blueprint that is called an etheric blueprint. And it is that blueprint that is driving all the cells that are being destroyed in your body and recreating themselves is following that blueprint. So what we do is we get something in our body and we run to somebody because we want somebody to fix us. I've got a pain, I've got a disease, I've got this, I want to be fixed. Well, the real truth is that that's only an effect of something that's probably been in your etheric blueprint a long, long time as far as a mispatterning. So the direction that we are going is going to be more toward an energetic diagnosis before we get a physical diagnosis. Science is proving to us today that most diseases are mispatternings in the etheric blueprint six, seven to nine months before they ever become physical. This is the greatest time ever for people to do more preventional work, preventing disease by finding it in its mispatterning in the etheric energy blueprint. And excuse me, I'm in four days of this now. We're in a <laughs> workshop here. So this is the mode I'm in teaching teachers and all that kind of thing. But I think this is something we all need to somewhat understand. I think human beings have lived in a space-time continuum called third space, fourth time continuum. And I'm borrowing from Einstein and some of the early uh, uh, scientists who brought us in this new quantum idea whatsoever. 
So I'll quickly explain that to you so it's easy to know that every day of your life, through your five senses, everything you see is energy patterned into three dimensions of height, width, and breadth. If you know those three things, you kind of can find out where you are in third dimension space. This is used by pilots. It is used by people who are flying planes through darkness and through storms. They have to know those three bits of information to locate themselves in space and see where they are at all times. So my, my uh, illustration here is always, I say to Charles, let's meet at uh, Fourth and Tryon tomorrow uh, for lunch on the third floor. I've given him three bits of location that he can find me in space, if he can find fourth and try on and the third floor of a building, he can find out where we're going to meet. What he doesn't know is when we're going to meet, so I'm going to add time to it, 1230. Now I have time space. So actually, that's the way we live every day, right? Every one of you looked at your clock, see what time. Some of you need to look at it a little earlier. But uh, <laughs> uh, we all look at our clock to say, okay, the, the meeting starts at 1115. I'm going to do my best. To, to, to get their own time because you're, you're and, and that's all relative. There's no such thing as time. Time is just an experience that you have going from A to B. And uh, I could go from A to B and uh, Greg could go from the same A and B and I'm going, wow, that was quick and Greg's doing, I thought I'd never get there. <laughs> it's the same experience, but it's all relative to how you experience it. This is how we live. So something brand new is happening that's exciting. Here's the, here's the good news. Even though all that you're hearing in the mass media is breakdown, 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 breakdown of everything that is going on financially, educationally, uh, religion, uh, you name every system, and it's going through a transformation. And how do I know that it's going through a transformation? Is because it's unstable and it's moving into a state of crisis. You say, well, that doesn't sound fun. <laughs> no. But mothers was birth pains. Fun. But joy cometh in the morning. Hmm? The pain of your life is only for a season. But joy cometh in the morning. Give me an amen on that. I want you to confirm, I don't care if you're going through some kind of pain or disease or whatever, it's only for a season. It's not forever, it's a season. But joy will come in the morning. So systems are breaking down. I can't talk about this without the caterpillar and the butterfly story. I know you get tired of it, but it's just the best story there is to give us an analogy of kind of what's going on today. And here's what I say, and I know you've heard me say it again. A caterpillar does not become unstable at the molecular level and end up as a bunch of goo to reorganize itself as a more evolved, enlightened caterpillar. So I'm here to tell you, you're not going through what you're going through mentally, emotionally, and physically so that you can get fixed and be the same old third dimensional physical form. But I'm here to tell you, there's a new blueprint breaking in. You don't have to keep reading the old one because the old one is totally taking us toward degeneration. The new one is taking us to what? Isn't that great? You've changed. Yeah. So it goes into that state. And the coolest thing about that that science can't figure out is some mystical molecule shows up out of that goo. They don't know where it comes from. I do, but they don't. And it shows up. You know what they named it? This just blows me away. The imaginative molecule. Why would they name it that unless it was totally spirit coming through them and saying that that goo begins to imagine itself as something completely different? It reinforces our whole teachings of visualization, meditation, and the ability to visualize and to use the power of imagination. David Bohm, who was the protege of Einstein, clearly says that whatever the brain can imagine, it believes it is real. See a new body. 
So what is breaking through? I know what's breaking down. <laughs> but what is it that's breaking through? Because it's what's breaking through that's causing the breakdown. Hmm? A new dimension of energy that's higher than third, fourth dimension. I call it fifth dimension energy. When I came into energy work 20 years ago, in meditation, I was offered this choice. Do you want to work with what's trying to, f trying to fix what's breaking down? Or do you want to work with what's breaking through? I had no idea, Connie, what that meant <laughs> in my head. But something in the cells of my body called cellular intelligence quickened and I immediately found bypassing my brain coming through my heart mind I choose to work with breakthrough and I knew that I was going to be working with a new energy that is breaking through at this particular time called fifth dimensional energy I believe with all my heart that if Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place for you, that where I am, that you may be also, that Jesus changed his vibratory frequency from a third, fourth to a fifth dimension energy. And there the Christ presence is raising us to be one with the vibration of the Christ. At that moment, it is no longer Christ in you, but it is Christ as you. Christ in you is a hope of glory. Christ as you is the glory. Is the glory. So we're opening portals. Vibrational portals that will make the distance. What is fifth dimension? According to Ascension teachings, the earth and all beings living on the earth are in a process of shifting into a whole new reality in which is a reality conscious of love, compassion, peace, spiritual wisdom, and where those elements prevail is called fifth dimension. See, some of you didn't even know you're already entering into fifth dimension. I hear it on your Facebook. I see it, read it on your Facebook. I hear it. I hear it from you that you are living in a place of unconditional love, non judgment, that you're living in a place of compassion. That you're living in all the elements of fifth dimension are showing up as your new nature, your new attribute. Christ is being formed in you. The Apostle Paul said, I'll travail with you until Christ be formed in you. So Christ is not an idea, a new thought idea. It's not some idea that ends up in your brain as a mental construct. So we can have a new belief system. It is the feeding of the Christ in us that increases and, and increases while the ego pseudo self decreases and decreases. The Christ self increases. And at some point there is a coming and appearing of the Christ into the world today. The Downside of that is the fact that you are straddling your third dimension and your fifth dimension experience, which is making us a little awkward more and more in the third dimension. This is why you go to watch things like you're balancing. The whole equilibrium of the magnetic fields of the spin of electrons is retuning itself to the higher fifth dimension of electrons that are coming in to change your DNA. Another thing, short-term memory. You can't remember it? You don't remember you have it? That, that's really short. Now, I know there's concerns today of dementia and, and all the things that are going on, but there's a spiritual thing happening. And this is what you need to sharpen your discernment to know the difference between what is breaking through and what is breaking down and the wisdom to know that. You've got to work with it. If it's something that is uh, 
genetically based as an illness or sickness, go see your doctor and get a good, uh, get all the uh, diagnosis that you can get, but then work with it differently. Go to somebody who does energy diagnosing and say already, what is, tell me, what is the cause? There's no cancer. There are cells that go awry and things happen and we name it cancer and now we've got to all be afraid of the big C word. I got it in 2014, the C word, with lung cancer. Oh my God, I got cancer. No, I had some cells in my lungs that went awry and didn't work right and they, they gave me a name for it. <laughs> we had a friend that had cancer who changed her whole negative to a positive and called it C answer. <laughs> that through this challenge that she would find many answers in her life going through this particular disease. What I'm saying to you, just as the systems of the world and the earth is changing, so are the systems in you changing. Your biology, your electromagnetic fields. Mother Earth is changing. And we are the children of Mother Earth. And as she changes, so her children must match the vibration, the frequency of her transformation and of her change. Most teachings state that the shift uh, the earth and humanity are taking into fifth dimension has been planned for eons, also that it already has been happening in the last few uh, decades. December 21st, 12 was a date that was given as a midpoint of the shift. So remember the Mayan big thing on 12? It was kind of taken out of context, but there was something to the fact that we were coming to the end of an era. And these things don't happen like that. It's hard to put it on a calendar. You know, I wish you could put it on a date and say this is the day it's going to happen. But things happen in seasons. There's overlappings. And right now you're living between worlds. Greg Braden calls it. Living between a world that is dying and a world that is being born at the same time. And you are here to help this process along. We as a community. I'm not that interested in just building another church in Charlotte. Charlotte's got churches everywhere. If you want a church, find you a church. Have no problem. We're looking for a fifth dimensional spiritual community of people who are heart driven and who are spirit led and are here to be a collective portal for fifth dimension energy norm normalities to come in and replace old third dimensional um, normalities that is not working anymore for us. We need to have the vision. All right, I got to stop here in a minute, but I'm going to give you some ideas. What is third dimension to fourth dimension? Third dimension is me, my stuff. It's about me. Heal me. I'm hurting. The rest of you are on your own. Heal me. Fifth dimension is collective. It's not about me or my group. It's about changing the planet. I have been shown for me, and I cannot for me, <laughs> uh, that I will not again return into a third dimension incarnation. I can't speak for you, but I think there's others with me who have reached the last third dimension incarnation. And why I share that with you is because you that feel like you've been in the finals of God School 101 and have a lot put on your plate and a lot through life to go through is because you're probably living what would be equal to other lifetimes in this one lifetime. Oh dear, I'm getting, I, I didn't mean to go there, but that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, let me give you my experience. I'd rather talk experience than theory. I um, had an experience a few years ago in which I was trying to find out why I had uh, this kind of innate fear and a little bit of anger. And uh, long story short is back in those days, everybody was doing the Bradshaw workshops of healing the child within and all of that. And I never fit that because I had a good childhood. I mean, nobody has a perfect one. 
But I had a good. I had mother and father. I had, you know, I was loved. I didn't fit all the abuse and all that rigmarole. So I knew it wasn't that. So I started f going to uh, people who did uh, regressions and things like that. And, oh, yeah, they take me back. I was a king and I was this and I was that. And that was interesting. But that wasn't doing it. And where I really found the answer was between lifetimes. It wasn't in another lifetime. It was between a lifetime. It was before this lifetime when I was standing before a council of beings being prepared for this incarnation. I don't know why I'm telling this today. And they were through telepathy. We we're, were not talking, but they were telling me, reviewing uh, my situation. And uh, finally said to me, uh, we're looking for volunteers to uh, live, uh, to reach, uh, because, how'd they say it? Uh, uh, the level of consciousness of humanity through free will has not chosen to reach a level to stabilize the new norms coming in. Therefore, we're looking for volunteers to reach a critical mass and to choose to live in this lifetime as many lifetimes it would take to get to that level of consciousness. And mine came out four lifetimes that I was to live. And here's where my anger was coming from. I started preaching at 16 years old. I never went to a prom. I didn't have graduation. I didn't get to be a regular teenager. I didn't get to do anything that most kids get to do because I was out pastoring and church and all that rigmarole. And I was just pretty pissed off at God about it. <laughs> like, why in the world did I have to start so young? Yeah. You know, and some other things was going on that I didn't understand. But then I realized I'm not a victim. God didn't make me do anything. I made a contract. And I said yes to the universe. I will be one of those who will reach the level of consciousness to stabilize the new fifth dimensional norms that are coming in. And I will put out the call to those who are a part of uh, resonating with this frequency to begin to develop a community of fifth dimensional people, a collective portal who will birth and bring forth a new heaven and a new earth and therefore a new human. <laughs> Y'all got me walking then. <laughs> Third dimension is about ego and separation. Fifth dimension is about oneness and unity and Christ consciousness. Third dimension is about breaking down, new systems breaking through, crises, transformation, worry and anxiety, enhanced intuition. I could go on and on and tell you that we are seeing in this community of people, and I don't mean just the heart light, but I mean those who are walking in so-called spirituality versus religion. I see it coming together more and more and connecting itself to reach its status of, of a critical mass to cause the greatest shift we've ever seen. And I'm telling you, we're in the 11th hour and the gods will show up in the 11th hour. <laughs> it will be the darkest before the dawn. And I... The most spiritual challenge of all is to accept everyone who's a player. You know, the story goes that the children of Israel were in Egypt for 430 years in slavery, making bricks for Pharaoh, day in and day out. And I'm sure they went to Sabbath school or something and said, Mmm, someday... God's going to get us out of here. Mm. Then they went back making bricks. <laughs> went back and said, well, we're getting closer now. <laughs> Kept making bricks. And God said, enough of that. If you're not going to move, I'm going to move you. So I'm going to raise somebody up. And he raised old Pharaoh. And here's what it says. And God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. The devil didn't do it. Pharaoh was God's instrument to get people moving out of their complacency. And I tell you, you got somebody right now. <laughs> I won't mention any names. More than one, but you got people today that are players. But they're making women get up. And get ready, women, because you're getting ready to really get up. <laughs> with what's going on today. And... Gay people coming out of the closets and, and uh, everybody who's been 
submerged into control is rising up today because a new energy is awakening within them and telling them that we need to evolve ourselves to the next level of what it means to be a human being. The Bible says we are new creatures in Christ and the old has passed away and the new has been birthed to us today. I want you to feel what is forming in you. Every one of you sitting here are pregnant with new spiritual ideas. You that are on jobs that you hate and hate going to, you have new possibilities emerging in you of new entrepreneurship. My vision is that everyone is making their living by their life purpose. You don't have to separate yourself and go to work for survival so you can keep a roof over your head. But you need to be making your living based upon why you are here in the first place. And to do that, you need to put your purpose into an idea and you need entrepreneurship. This is the empowerment. This is the children of light that is coming forth today. Well, I could go on and on about fifth dimension. It's just one of my great... Uh, of passions, and it's so important that we understand this great uh, experience of a new heaven and a new earth. 1 Corinthians 5, 17, we're new creatures in Christ. Ephesians 11 says, we shall become, uh, Ezekiel says, one heart and one spirit. I'll take away the old stony heart and I'll give you a new heart of flesh. Hmm? And that heart will carry the seed of my light. And you'll become Heartlight Community Center. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah, yeah. Ernest Holmes says, We can do everything to serve our country and the cause of freedom, and we shall do everything. You and I, every person and every American and every freedom-loving person throughout the world is going to do everything that he can or she can to crush nationalism, crush di dictatorship, crush author authoritism. But we don't have to hate anyone to do it. Stop the hating. Stop the judging. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I hope you get a little bit of my vision, you know. We are truly in such a powerful spiritual process today. Joy cometh in the morning. Join with me. Holy Spirit, we, you are our true teacher. You are our true visionary that is deeply within us. Let these words resonate into the hearts and the spirits of those that you've brought here today to receive it. Let it become water to feed the seed. Let it fall into good ground and bring forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. We ask that you give us greater faith and endurance to go through the time of breakdown so that we can enjoy the rising of the sun of a new day of breakthrough. New models, new systems, new ways of teaching our children, new ways of eating, new ways of doing everything as a human is being offered to us today. We ask this in the wonderful, wonderful name of the living presence of the Christ that dwells within us, and so it is. Time to let your heart light shine. Time to let your heart light shine.